Well, scientists are predicting that a new ocean could be created as Africa gradually splits into two separate parts in the future. Unfortunately, the African continent is splitting into two. The Kenya Rift Valley recently saw the appearance of a sizable crack, which set the world's media ablaze. This odd and puzzling fissure seems to have materialized out of thin air, and many respectable experts and scientists have been working hard to uncover its cause. Now, a lot of these studies are coming to the conclusion that Africa is actually fragmenting. The Earth is constantly changing, something many of us find terrifying, as I'm sure many of you are also aware. It is crucial to know what is happening with our world, whether we are thinking about our great, great, great grandkids in a hundred years or how it may affect us now. What though is triggering this separation and what consequences might it have for Earth? Keeping that terrifying possibility in mind, join us as we explore the reason the African continent is splitting into two. Sudden and wide, a fissure spanning miles appeared in southwestern Kenya not long ago. The ongoing rip led to the collapse of a portion of the Nairobi Narok roadway. At first, scientists thought the fissure might have formed as a result of tectonic activity on the East African Rift. Although geologists have come to the conclusion that this feature is probably an erosional gully, there are still unanswered concerns about its formation, its possible connection to the East African Rift, and why it occurred in that specific area. The erosion of the soft soils that filled a previous fault that was caused by a rift could be one possible explanation for the crack. Even while some changes may be so subtle that we don't even detect them, the Earth is constantly evolving. One example that comes to us is plate tectonics. But every so often, a major event occurs that prompts fresh speculation about the possible partition of the African continent. Tectonic plates are the building blocks of Earth's crust and upper mantle, which together make up the lithosphere. These plates are in constant motion, gliding across a viscous asthenosphere with different relative speeds. Convection currents in the asthenosphere and forces produced at plate boundaries are possible processes, while the exact mechanism causing their movement is still up for debate. In addition to repositioning the plates, these pressures have the ability to rupture them, creating rifts and, in extreme cases, new plate boundaries. One area where this is taking place right now is the East African Rift System. Is a full breakup of Africa imminent? If yes, when exactly will it happen? As a starting point for answering this topic, we can examine the local tectonic plates, which are the outermost portions of our planet's surface, and can either pull apart to form enormous basins or collide to form mountains. The larger and more ancient Nubian tectonic plate is dragging eastward along this enormous rift in eastern Africa, while the smaller and younger Somalian plate is pulling westward. The Nubian plate is referred to as the African plate on occasion, while the Somalian plate is likewise known as the Somali plate. Additionally, to the north, the Arabian plate is being separated from the Somalian and Nubian plates. In the Afar area of Ethiopia, a Y-shaped rift system is formed when these plates cross. Roughly 35 million years ago, in the eastern section of the African continent, between Arabia and the Horn of Africa, the East African Rift began to emerge. The rifting eventually reached northern Kenya around 25 million years ago after having progressed southward. The rift is formed by two sets of crustal fissures that run roughly parallel to one other. The eastern rift cuts across Kenya and Ethiopia, while the western rift forms an arc that stretches from Uganda to Malawi, while the western fork borders the Congolese jungle, the eastern fork is dry. The unexpected appearance of the enormous fracture in southwestern Kenya revealed activity along the eastern branch of the Rift Valley, which runs through Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. When does rifting occur? The lithosphere will thin out as it stretches in response to horizontal extensional stress. Rift valleys are formed when magma eventually bursts. 
the splitting of tectonic plates can occur for various causes. Mantle convection is the ultimate cause of all Earth's tectonic forces, including the extensional forces necessary for rifting. As the mantle material expands when heated, convection in the mantle happens. As a result of the expansion, the material's density drops below that of the surrounding fluid, and it rises due to buoyant forces. The fluid cools, thickens, and sinks when it reaches the surface. The next step is heating, and the process keeps going until convection cells are formed. Rifting can be explained by mantle convection by positioning continental rifts at the convection cell borders. Given that no set of elementary particles can be derived that would account for the geometry and positions of every contemporary rift, it is highly improbable that all rifts are caused by mantle convection. Therefore, additional factors must be operating. Another occurrence known as plumes could be responsible when heated mantle material reaches the base of a continental plate, it can cause the lithosphere above it to heat up, which can lead to rifting. Along with this, rifting can occur as a result of extensional stresses caused by the plume's upward migration against the plate's base. Another occurrence is the ridge push and slab pull. Slab pull is the downward force that develops when continental plates are subducted due to the gravitational attraction of the subduction zone's materials. The force known as ridge push is created when material accumulates along spreading ridges and tends to push the two plates apart. Rifting can occur when two continents' ends are subjected to the same set of forces, such as slab pull or ridge push. A continental breakup may occur if these pressures are strong enough and the continent has a weak zone. Rifting can occur as a result of subduction if the lithosphere is bent prior to subduction. Rifting can occur when bending causes the surface radius of a plate to grow in response to the extensional pressures acting on it, as the curvature of the plate is increased. Areas of thicker elevated continental crust, such as those formed by collisional orogeny, may also exhibit rifting. As a result of gravitational collapse, stretching, and rifting, as well as the material's weight, lateral spreading occurs in these instances. Surface manifestations along the rift valley, such as seismic activity and volcanic eruptions, accompany this process. The creation of a new ocean basin is a possible outcome of rifting, the first step of continental breakup. This may sound bizarre, but keep in mind that the surface of the Earth is always changing. It's just so slow that it eludes human comprehension. Our current perception of the world is a recent development. The jigsaw-like assembly of huge tectonic plates is the source of the land and water that we see today in Eurasia, the Americas, Africa, Antarctica, and Oceania. But on a scale of millions of years, these jigsaw pieces move around very slowly. Consider the Earth's breakup some 138 million years ago, when Africa and South America split apart. The fact that the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of South America and Africa fit together like a jigsaw puzzle is a stunning visual representation of the former union of these two land masses. One theory, continental drift, postulates that the continents have moved and are still moving. Even though this theory was put out by Alfred Wegener in 1912, he was not fully aware of the processes involved. Scientists believe the plates have been moving for millions of years. Pangaea, the current configuration of the seven continents, was once a much larger landmass that existed some 250 million years ago. A gigantic ocean that surrounded the entire supercontinent was named Panthalassa. According to current scientific consensus, North America once stood more east and south than it does today. A large portion of North America was indeed located in or near the tropical zone. How do we know? Well, there are fossils that date back to this era. These fossils reflect creatures and plants native to tropical regions. North Dakota and Greenland, two icy locales, are the sites where the fossils were discovered. The movement of the plates continues, with the Pacific Ocean decreasing and the Atlantic Ocean growing. Pay attention to where the Indian subcontinent is right now. 
the Indian and Eurasian plates collided after 135 million years of fast movement of about 4 inches per year, creating a force that raised the Himalayas to their current position as the highest mountain range in the world. What do you imagine the planet will look like in a hundred or two hundred million years? What places will see the formation of new mountain ranges? What areas are likely to see the eruption of new volcanoes? The Atlantic will have grown while the Pacific has shrunk by 50 million years. Greenland will be located to the west and north, while North and South America have moved westward, with California moving north. Massive mountain construction will occur on both the European and Arabian peninsulas as a result of the upcoming rotations of the two halves of the African continent. The eastern half will move eastward towards the Arabian peninsula, while the western half will move clockwise and smash into Europe. As things stand, New Zealand will move southward and Australia will move northward into the tropics. For continental rifting to occur, there must be sufficient extensional forces to rupture the lithosphere. The tensions in the East African rift originad from the movement of the mantle beneath the surface, making it an active rift. Subterranean, a massive mantle plume is pushing the lithosphere upwards, weakening it from the rising temperatures and subjecting it to stretching and breaking through, faulting. This mantle plume, which is frequently called the African superswell and is hotter than usual, has been shown to exist in geophysical data. Both the Rift Valley's creation and the unusually high terrain of the southern and eastern African plateaus have been attributed to this super plume, which is generally believed to be the cause of the pull-apart forces. The characteristic geography of rifts is defined by a succession of depressions bordered by faults and encircled by higher ground. From above, the East African system appears as a string of parallel rift valleys divided by massive boundary faults. A succession of these fissures began in the Afar region of northern Ethiopia around 30 million years ago, and moving southern into Zimbabwe averaged between 1 and 2 inches every year. While rifting is often imperceptible to the naked eye, Earthquakes can be caused by the reactivation of ancient faults or the creation of new ones as the Nubian and Somali plates keep drifting apart. On the other hand, the majority of the seismic activity in East Africa is minor in size and distributed across a large area along the Rift Valley. Constant continental fragmentation and the closeness of the hot, molten asthenosphere to the surface are both shown on the surface by the volcanoes that form beside it. What makes the East African Rift special is that it provides a window into the rifting process at several points along its length. In the southern region, where the rift is relatively new, there is widespread faulting and low extension rates. Seismicity and volcanic activity are not excessive. But all the way down to the Afar region, the floor of the Rift Valley is covered in rocks formed by volcanic eruptions. The lithosphere has likely thinned to the point of full breakup in this area, according to this. As soon as this occurs, magma will start to solidify in the empty vacuum left by the tectonic plates, creating a new ocean. The sea floor will expand out along the whole gap in due time, which could take hundreds of millions of years. Because of the massive influx of water, the African continent will shrink, and the Horn of Africa and other portions of Somalia and Ethiopia will form a huge island in the Indian Ocean. A feeling of urgency can be imparted to continental rifting by dramatic events, such as abrupt faults that split motorways. Nonetheless, rifting is a painstakingly gradual process that, in most cases, divides Africa undetected. Africa is steadily opening along multiple lines, with a combined rate of more than 0.25 inch per year, as shown by the existence of the eastern and western rifts, as well as offshore zones of earthquakes and volcanoes. Currently, the rifting is somewhat modest, comparable to the growth rate of a person's toenails. The asthenosphere, the hotter and weaker upper portion of Earth's mantle, is believed to have heated the area between Kenya and Ethiopia, causing the East African rift to emerge. Due to the expansion and rising of the crustal layer brought about by this heat, the fragile continental rock was stretched and fractured. The result, 
was a period of intense volcanic activity that produced Africa's tallest peak, Kilimanjaro. Various theories propose various ways in which Africa could fragment. In one possible outcome, a sea forms between the African and Somalian plates as the former splits apart. The new continent would encompass Somalia, Djibouti, Eritrea, and portions of Mozambique, Tanzania, Kenya, and the eastern half of Ethiopia. Separation of simply Mozambique and eastern Tanzania is another possibility. But Africa might not be divided in half. It is possible that the rifting will not be able to separate the Somalian and Nubian plates quickly enough due to the geological factors at work. The Mid-Continent Rift, which winds its way for about 1,900 miles across the upper Midwest of North America, is a prominent example of a failed rift on the other side of the world. The East African Rift's Eastern Fork was an unsuccessful rift. Nevertheless, operations continue at the Western Branch. The question remains whether the current rate of rifting will lead to the formation of smaller ocean basins like the Red Sea, and later on, larger ones like the miniature Atlantic Ocean. On the other hand, could it possibly reach its destination faster? It could also come to a standstill. If current trends continue, a sea comparable in size to the Red Sea might emerge in 20 to 30 million years. When East Africa finally departs, it will be merely the next chapter in this immense geological novel. It is bleak, but who knows? Maybe humans will survive to witness these changes. A nuclear holocaust, a warming planet, and opposition to vaccines for avoidable diseases all point to the likelihood that humanity will cause its own demise. One in 14,000 is a possible possibility that humans will go extinct in any given year, according to scientists who have examined the likelihood of natural disasters alone, excluding any human interference. More than 99% of all known species have become extinct. Extinction has always been a part of nature, whether it's been caused by small-scale changes in the environment or evolutionary competition, or by larger-scale, catastrophic natural disasters like the Chicxulub asteroid, which killed off numerous dinosaurs. Yes, human activity is making extinction rates worse for many species. The Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford University was wondering whether there was a way to determine the absolute maximum chance that humans will perish in any particular year, what they called a natural background extinction rate, for the species. They hypothesized that understanding the probability of human extinction due to a catastrophic natural event will help us determine if the dangers to mankind are more posed by natural or man-made factors. They accomplished this by excluding man-made threats like nuclear war and climate change and concentrating on natural hazards that Homo sapiens have encountered and managed to survive for the past 200,000 years, such as supervolcano eruptions and asteroid impacts. The rationale behind this is that we can infer an extinction rate from the fact that we have managed to survive these threats. Based on the available data, which indicates that Homo sapiens has been around for at least 200,000 years, the likelihood of our species' natural demise in any particular year is less than 1 in 14,000 and more likely than 1 in 87,000. According to the study, changing those variables can change the upper bound. For instance, Taking a look at the hominid fossils supposedly belonging to Homo sapiens discovered in Jebel Irhoud, which are estimated to have been deposited around 300 sound years ago, marks the beginning of modern humans. When we consider the earliest Homo genus appearance and a longer history of surviving 2 million years ago, the number for the yearly likelihood of extinction due to natural causes drops below 1 in 140,000. With a 1% annual probability of extinction, we also have a 99.99% annual probability of not going extinct. But to reframe it another way, that's the same as the probability that seven commercial airplanes out of 100,000 will crash on any one day. This analysis does, of course, have certain limitations. Obviously, it doesn't take man-made risks into consideration, 
and it solely considers the likelihood of extinction due to natural processes for which the danger has remained constant or even decreased over the past 200,000 years. Since nuclear weapons were only invented 70 years ago, a 200,000 year record of surviving nuclear war is largely meaningless. The impacts of climate change will be more severe in Africa than on any other continent, according to many scientists, policymakers, and academia. It would be beneficial, nevertheless, to know the human extinction rate in the background, apart from the effects of human activity. It helps us to recognize and rank the most significant dangers that we encounter on a generalized level. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.